name is Marcus. And I'm Jack. And you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. So it's pretty early in the new year. Welcome to 2021. And here we are in Reef Galleria and we're just gonna do a tour because there's so much exciting stuff going on here. All the tanks are looking fantastic and there's some pretty awesome fish and coral that uh, I think a lot of people would really love to see. So let's get it out there and put it on the internet as we always do. Um, so yeah, let's take it away with a tank tour. Sounds good. So just a quick update on our uh, front water box display tank. Um, this tank's been undergoing some renovations. Uh, it's had many attempts at different types of styles of tank, but um, I've given Brett privileges to uh, make it his own. And uh, he's chosen to go with an LPS and NPS dominated tank. Um, I kind of just gave Brett free reign to do what his imagination pleases, and he's done wonderfully with getting these Ventralis NPS in here, which are just like the most amazing NPS I've ever seen. Um, not many fish I've ever seen in the marine hobby actually glow under the blue lights, but these guys are just so cool. Yeah, there's a whole school of the Ventralis in here, so. I think I'm getting on camera two or three of them. They're, they're, they're quick little guys, but uh, I think there's about six of them in a tank. And that, that like, uh, I guess uh, on camera, it's probably going to look like a hypersaturated blue on the top of the Ventralis Antheas. That's what they look like in real life. It is hypersaturated in real life. They do seriously glow. Um, so they're, they're a really unique fish. And I, yeah, you've got to see them in person. I think a lot of people would would count Ventralis Antheas as their dream fish if they saw one in person. And so tell us about some of these interesting corals that are going on in this tank. We've got some upside down in the bridge here. So Brett's placed, yeah, some upside down Dendronephthia in here. Dendronephthia is commonly referred to as thistle coral or thistle leathers. Uh, they're quite spiky when you touch them. They're not like going to uh, get through your skin, but they're a bit uncomfortable, as some would say. Um, so yeah, there's quite a good assortment in here. I love the idea of putting them upside down. Dendronephthia also need quite a higher flow. Um, the higher flow and, and the water flow helps them with their, their outside structure to maintain the structure of the coral. Um, We've also got a big spider sponge here, a really large one as well, which has got its polyps out right now, as we yeah, can see. Yeah, a few spider sponges. The polyps are out from the broadcast feeding of Vitalis SPS food soft coral food. Um, you probably noticed there's a bit of algae on the, the spider sponge. We're probably putting that down to the amount of light in this, this system. Uh, even the shops can't get it right sometimes, so um, yeah, don't fear about having algae in your tank. Everyone gets algae. So, um, and some dinos in here as well. So A really good hammer and torch and euphilia garden going on across the top. With, yeah. uh, on one side here, this big, great, um, uh, I think that's like devil's hand leather or something like that, yeah, or a, a, long, or a, a long, long, long polyp leather and a, a really nice little rick in there too. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next tank and see what's going on in that one. Awesome. Next up, we've got your famous L-shaped display tank in, in, the, uh, in the shop. Uh, what's been happening with this guy? Yeah, so the trade-off was I, I gave Brett the water box, I get the big display. Um, it is a bit of a challenge with this tank for sure, with the size. Um, balancing the amount of fish and also eventually wanting to do an SPS dominant display. Um, but yeah, we've had an overhaul of the aquascape. I used uh, some of first time Reefer TV's glue to put the aquascape together, which was very quick and easy. Um, but yeah, so we've kind of just gone from a mixed reef at this stage. Eventually I want to be SPS dominant, but it, as we all know, it takes time. So I've gone with some nice fillers like Duncan's, um, and a nice hammer guard and then torch garden up here um, and then a few clams down the bottom. Um, mostly at this stage we're focusing on the fish and the fish health in this system. Um, once, as any customer would know, recently we quite emptied quite a few of the fish out of here. We've recently put some back in. Um, we had to do that quite urgently because we were having trouble with the purple tanks beating each other up. Um, but now that there's a bunch of different fish like pyramid butterflies, bellus angels, uh, there's a gem tang we put in there. Um, yeah, a lot of people have probably noticed that gem yeah. tang hanging out in here. That's a pretty special fish. 
So that really minimizes the aggression with the amount of fish in here now. Um, they all tend to school together and follow each other around the tank. My favorite's probably that clown tank at the top there. Um, one of my favorite fish of all time. This guy? No, uh, this guy here. Clown tank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Let me see if I can get him on camera. He's quite quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where'd he go? Oh, he's, he's very, very fast. Very fast. <laughs> uh, we might need some creative editing to get this guy on camera, but uh, there he is. All right, yeah, what a beautiful fish. Yeah, he's very cool. And he gets nice and big, so he'll eventually be the showpiece of the tank. Um, yeah, there's some amazing fish in this tank. Like, um, there's just the, the, the variety and assortment, and, and that's something you can only do in a tank of this size and this dynamics where there's so many places for fish to hide. You've got the two facets of the tank being L-shaped and, you know, this new aquascape you've built with all these swim-throughs and bridges everywhere really helps reduce aggression between um, uh, different species because, you know, every fish can have its place and have its hiding spot and, uh, you know, always just get out of the war path if it needs to. Yeah, definitely trying to keep on theme with the purple and yellow as well, with the purple tanks, obviously, and the Spanish hogfish. There's a flameback angel, but he's going to have to come out um, by the time I want to get real serious with yeah. SPS. Because he just does nothing but munch on polyps all day. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, we'll probably use a fish trap to remove him. Um, awesome. But yeah. All right, let's move on and look at some of the coral that we got going on at the awesome. moment. Let's do it. So the first thing that I've noticed that's new in the shop is this big acrylic rack with all your zoas on it. Yeah, so we got this made at Southeast Plastics. Um, we got it as a prototype because we do want to convert all of the shop's racking to this type of racking. Um, we wanted to do a prototype before we invest in a whole giant system to find any problems or errors um, with the original design, which we've narrowed down quite a few. So we'll um, edit that and then hopefully get a, uh, a fully new rack in here. Um, obviously specializing in frags, um, we do a lot of growing here, so we wanted to maximize the amount of agriculture that the shop is doing. Um, but yeah, a bunch of new coral that's come in in the past couple of days, and there's more, there's two more boxes coming uh, tomorrow. Um, so we've got heaps of nice trackies in, and a few other corals which we'll go through, but um, I can see yeah. some really nice sun corals here, and a whole bunch of colorful acans on frag plugs. Um, you know, that's an instant Acan garden right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and what else have we got? We've got Blastos, a whole collection of them, uh, more Acans, bigger, bigger colonies there if anyone's looking for those. Um, you know, your ever-present, ubiquitous green star polyp and uh, some Xenia from the looks of it. Uh, Plove polyps. Plove polyps, yeah, Plove yeah. polyps, yep. Uh, then we've got all, what, leathers? Just assorted um, leathers, Assorted yeah. leathers, uh, Sinularia. Um, and uh, some of the more basic um, sort of Rodacus yeah. and Moth. Down this side, we've got chalices, some of the larger pieces, and then the frag show begins with uh, yeah. what have we got? We've got. So most of these, uh, Lepticeris, Lepastria, um, Samacora species, uh, we started with a couple from other suppliers, and now we're at the stage where we're just kind of growing our own and selling our own. Yep. Uh, so a bit more self-sufficient there. I recognize uh, these gold torches. Yeah, those gold torches from Shane up at uh, Sustainable Reefs in Cairns. Fully uh, aquacultured gold torches. They've never seen the ocean uh, completely grown in captivity. Moving on. Lots of cool um, scollies. So we got our red collection, green collection, war paint collection. Some nice recordias here. It's a nice assortment there. Um, heaps of Duncans. Yep. We had about twice that amount. But okay. Yeah, Duncans are quite popular. They're one of my favorite corals, uh, especially because of their growth rate for an LPS coral, which is great. Um, yeah, just a really nice showpiece. Nice. And then assortment of hammers that have come in the past couple of days. So some colors you don't often see. So green with uh, pink tips. That should color up quite nicely. Um, some gold tips. Toxic greens, there's a nice mint green in amongst all these guys as well, which yeah. is quite nice. And then above there, you've got some greens, toxic greens, and some marbles. Yeah, really, really nice hammers, as always. And then uh, some SPS frags 
along the top rack here, yeah. uh, enjoying a bit higher flow and a bit higher light. And uh, yeah, we won't go through each and every one of these, but like there's a, Some a huge pieces. selection yeah. in there. So like from Jason Fox Fireworks, Blue Digi, Green Goblin, Red Digi, um, Red Dragon. Yeah. There are probably a few names that we're mentioning. And then moving along, some more hammers. A nice Dragon Soul Favia there, nice one, Favia, one of my yeah. personal favorite Favia. Although it is an aggressive coral, so give it some space. <laughs> Bubble corals. Bubble coral. Also an aggressive Euphilia, so yeah. give that some space too. Uh, then we got lots of torches. Uh, big, big variety of green torches in there. There's a, a peach one up the top there too that's really nice. And Cataphilia, or more commonly known as Elegance, right? Yep, so yeah, quite a few Elegance corals. Um, this is our LPS system, or, or customers that come in, they say they want something that moves. This is the tank that we point them to. Yep. Uh, almost every coral in this tank moves, which is quite cool. Um, some nice gold tip elegance at the top, which uh, you don't often see. Yeah. Quite, quite beautiful. Uh, some little button scullies as well. Quite a good selection there. Yeah, full collection of button scullies. You, you don't see these very often, you're right about that. And they're, they're different to regular scullies. They have very different patterning on them, like the... Uh, I, I like that one on the top uh, top left there, which has almost got like a tiger stripe pattern. And especially with, if you're on 100% blues, those scullies really do pop. They look yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, nice little assortment of gony frags. So you've got greens and yeah. lime greens and glitters and reds and pinks and any gony that you want, really. Yeah, basically every, yeah. every gony you want, ready to go on a frag plug. Get one of each and make yourself an instant gony garden. Or skip the growth and just go straight for the big colonies. Yeah. Nice colonies, of, so. nice colonies of green and and I guess you'd call this a glitter that's not a glitter. It's often the color that you see that is a glitter, but it's not actually glitter. Yeah, it's still nice though. Uh, and they add so much movement. I really like gonies. Yeah. Uh, like like when, if I just push back here and you see them all at once, it, they just look amazing all together like that. And then down on the front here, we've got all of these sign arenas. Yeah. So, Plenty of side arenas at the moment. Um, heaps of all these kind of LPS corals that go towards the bottom. We've got nice deshies here as well. Um, nice orange deshi and a couple other different pieces. That one's pretty cool. That one's pretty cool, yeah. I saw that one and I just had to cherry pick that one at the suppliers. I, I quite like this one as well. They always look nice deshies. You can contra. I, I, I'm always a fan of getting a couple of the same species of coral, but in different color morphs, and then putting them all next to each yeah, other because they contrast each other really well. Yeah. Uh, and then we're into tracky land as well. Yeah, so we've got some nice trackies that we went and picked out ourselves. Um, I think there's about 35 that we picked out, so some nice, really green ones. An assortment of just multicolor variety. Some wow, nice what are these ones? Yeah, so they really pop. They would look really nice in just amongst like all your forty dollar ones. Just yeah. makes them look so much better, and it really pops out that that red against all the green. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we got one more side to go of the coral systems here at Reef Galleria, and this is all all the, all the hammers and some other stuff. So these are more your beginner hammers. So like for anyone who's setting up a new tank and just wants to t test the water with some hardy corals that are on the cheaper side, um, these are. I mean, what, what do we call them? Small hammers, mint hammers, yeah. um, B-grade hammers, I guess, some of them. Um, although any B-grade coral can become an A-grade coral with enough love and attention. So yeah, plenty of different hammers. And then something a little unique here. Tell me about this yeah, coral. Yeah, nice bow bank eye. So um, these is what you probably call the true Acan, because Acans are now Micromusa Lord Howensis, and these guys are Acan Dastria bow bank eye. So, really some nice red there. Yeah, you can't really get redder for that price, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, Bowerbankies, in my opinion, are a very underrated coral, and it wouldn't surprise me if they become a trend at some point, like some corals do, and the, the prices on them sk tend to skyrocket once they become a trend. So, uh, yeah, same with the Echinata. Maybe, That's uh, quite nice too. Be good Especially coral to get into. You can see the, the, new the growth. wild growth and then the new growth in a, in a shop tank. Yeah. You got quite nice colour there. Just going back on what you mentioned before, that any B-grade coral can become an A-grade coral with a lot of attention. So. Yeah. 
Now up on the top here, we've got this giant hammer. So yeah, if anyone's so that hammer's like wanting a tank filler with like what a hundred heads on it or something. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Yeah, it's like a classic all size hammer. I really don't want to cut it up, so someone's more than welcome to come down and buy it off us. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's just a quick shop tour for today. Uh, as you can see, there's some pretty awesome corals on the market at the moment. So come down to Reef Gallery and you know check them out. You know, add something special to your tank for the new year. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing a heap more content for 2021. So really looking forward to you know all of the things we've got um, planned and you know with my tank upgrade. And there's some big upgrades happening in the shop as well, which we'll talk about soon. But uh, yeah, my name is Marcus and I'm Jack, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.